I couldn't touch my clothes. So I had to be dressed. I couldn't touch a utensil. So I had to be, did your, did your mom this morning, did she put you on her knee and say, your baby, let me feed you? She did that this morning for you? You fed yourself this morning. Did your mom dress you this morning? Did she come and put you, no. I, I, had, I was like a baby. I was like that beautiful baby in the back of the room, back there, who still needs to be dressed and fed and stuff at that point. I was like a little baby. I was a big man. I was a big man. I've been a Marine. I grew up a cable car. And now people have to do everything. Give me a bath. Sometimes I didn't like it. Sometimes I felt sorry for myself. And I was able to walk. The good news was I was able to walk. So I would go outside and start walking along the streets in San Francisco and get stronger and better and healthier every day as I walked. So that was the good news. And one day, I was home all by myself. They had fed me, bathed me, dressed me. And I was sitting in my house, and I said, OK, it's time for a walk. I'm going to get up and go for a walk. And I got up, and I went to the front door, but nobody was home. Everybody had gone out. I was home alone. Remember, I couldn't touch anything. How was I going to turn the door knob? I couldn't touch it. And then I got really scared. And then I started to panic. And then I started to cry. I remember lying down on the floor in front of that door, the most useless, helpless, worthless person on earth. Why did the doctors and nurses try so hard to save me? Was this some kind of a joke? I lay there crying and feeling sorry for myself and, and looking up at that doorknob and finally through my tears, I made a decision. I kicked off my slippers and I reached up with my feet and I grabbed hold of that doorknob. I was going to turn it. I was going to make it turn. I don't, my socks were too slow. I couldn't get a grip on the doorknob. It was one more loser, one more wasted effort, one more moment that wasn't going to work in my life. And all of a sudden, the door popped open. And I let myself out of my prison that I had made for myself. And I discovered one more limitation in my life that was only going to last as long as I let it. Maybe I was starting to learn that it's not what happens to you. It really is what you do about it. There's lots of stuff in life that happens. Stuff that's too hard to do. Stuff that, that you don't want to do. Stuff that people are telling you to do and it doesn't, isn't a good thing. Now there's a lot of things you shouldn't be doing. And that's cool too, because the smartest kids are the one who re ones who realize when somebody else says, come on, let's go do that. You get to decide, you get to choose whether you know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But it's amazing what happens in life when that obstacle that's been in front of us becomes an opportunity. And when we decide, as you heard Catherine say a little while ago, the longest journey begins with a single step. Amazing what happens sometimes when we take that first step, even when we think we can't even when we think it's too hard, even when some of the other kids are kind of laughing at us maybe, because we're trying so hard. When we're willing to take that step to make a huge difference. And I went out on those streets of San Francisco, and I didn't like the look at people. I had been burned, my face was a mess. My face looks a lot nicer now than it used to look, not long after I was burned. And people would look at me, and. And I didn't like it, so I looked away, and I'd always look down at my shoes. And sometimes when kids your age would come towards me, I would turn around and go in the opposite direction. Because sometimes kids like you are a lot more honest than grown-ups. Sometimes you ask the questions with your lips. But one day I was walking along <coughs> those streets of San Francisco. It was after school, and a, and a kid was coming towards me, and she could have been you. She could have been you. She was almost as sweet as you, 
and you were coming towards me, you had your book bag, your backpack, whatever you had, and you were coming towards me on your way home from school, and, and I was looking down at my feet because I didn't want to look at anybody, and I was especially afraid that kids might ask a question, and I looked up just for a second, and before I could look away, our eyes met, and you know what happened? You smiled at me. You gave me the just almost as nice as that smile just now. You smiled at me. You didn't say, here's my book bag, here's my lunch money, here's all my stuff. You just smiled. And you know what you said with that smile? You said, hi, you're okay. I'm not afraid of you. You seem like a nice person, and I wish you well. That's all you said with that nice smile. And you imagine how that papaya seed made me feel. Imagine that seed planted in my heart. And I continued along the streets of San Francisco, and I wasn't as afraid to look at grown-ups or kids anymore. And I continued along, and a day later, a week later, I don't know what it was, it was after school again, and, and, I, and I was watching a boy coming towards me, and he was a young guy, it could have been you, the boy with the camera back there, he's a good looking guy, and, and you were coming towards me, and I wasn't as afraid now, and, as you came towards me, I was kind of watching you because you looked really cool. And inevitably, our eyes met, and I smiled first. And you smiled back. And both our lives changed because more seeds were being planted 